Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. For today's video, we've got kind of a game, maybe a little bit of a showdown of this versus that. So there are a lot of products that I frequently get asked in my comment section, like which would you recommend this one or that one? Typically, these are products that are favorites of mine that I recommend often that happen to be similar. Now I've seen similar videos before from Samantha March, from Khaki, so I will leave their channels linked down below, but I thought that this might be helpful for those of you that have been asking about some very specific comparisons. So if you guys are new here, hello, my name is Kelly. Here in the month of December, I'm posting every single day for Vlogmas, so you will find a new video from me every morning at 9 a.m. Eastern. Be sure to subscribe, and let's go ahead and hop into it. Update on the copper hair, because you guys have been asking how it fades or for me to give you guys updates. So if you missed it, I dyed, I'm putting dyed in air quotes, but I temporarily tinted my hair with a semi-permanent dye, fr dye from Moroccan oil, which was in the shade Copper. I've used their semi-permanent colors a lot. I've used almost every shade. This was my first time using Copper, and this is what it looks like after one wash. So this is the update. Definitely faded from the brighter orange color that you guys saw, but honestly, I think this is kind of like more like what I want. I think before it was such a warm orange, it was difficult for me to pair with clothing and makeup, whereas this I feel like, this is something I feel like I could keep long term, whereas the other one I was like, you know, I think I would get sick of that fast. This I'm liking right now, I think. That's what I say now. And then sometimes I watch the footage back and I'm like, actually no. Anyways, here we go. What prompted this is that I will not shut up about pressed powders this year and I have so many pressed powder favorites and you guys are like, is this one better than this one? How does this one compare to this one? So we've got a few comparisons. So first of all, this one from CoverGirl is so popular. This is their clean, fresh pressed powder. And a lot of you guys were asking how it compares to the Kosas. And I actually feel like it's not that similar. So I have a different one for the Kosas, but just to say how they compare, I don't think they do. But what I do think it's quite similar to is this one from Bite, which is a favorite of mine. This is the Bite Beauty Changemaker Press Powder. I love her. I've hit pan on it. This is such a good formula. And the CoverGirl one, I would say is somewhat similar. I have the shade two in Bite, and in CoverGirl, I have the shade 120 Fair. But you know what, I also have the shade one in Bite, so let me grab that because I think that's gonna be closer. Um, Yeah, I would say this is what shade one looks like in Bite versus shade 120 in the CoverGirl, just to give you a bit of a reference point. This is almost like a little too light for me. This one, shade number two, is perfect. So the difference between these two, I would say it's minimal. They give a similar effect on the skin. They both are a little bit blurring. They lock products in. But I would say that the Bite Powder allows a little bit more glow to shine through, whereas I find this one to be a little bit more mattifying than I was expecting. And I would not call it a flat matte, but I don't think it allows as much glow to shine through as the other powders that I'm going to talk about. So this is actually the powder that I'm wearing today and I feel like my face looks quite matte right now. And I actually used a really glowy base product. I used the Tarte Maracuja Skin Tint for my foundation. So that on its own is pretty glowy. So to then have applied this over top, oh, and I have like a glowy blush on, I've got a lot of highlight, but I feel like I still look quite matte. Now. I have dry skin, so that could be part of it. If you're an oily gal and you're watching this, you might be like, that's not my experience with that. But I find this to be a little bit more mattifying than this one. So because of that, I think it would come down to preference, but if I'm putting them head to head, I'm going to say that the bite wins the battle. Let's talk about two new to me concealers that are also quite similar. This is the Kosas Revealer Concealer and this is the Catrice True Skin High Coverage Concealer. Okay, you know when you're at a restaurant and you can't decide what you're gonna eat and your friend at the table will ask you like, okay, what are you gonna get? And you're like, you know, I don't know. When the waiter comes up, I'm gonna make a, a game time decision. That's how I went into this video with these concealers. Everything else I knew, like, yes, I'm going to go with this one. Yes, I know I'm going to go with this one. Actually, no, there's one other fits in this category. But with these, I went into the video like, you know what? We're just gonna see what happens on camera because I don't know. These are actually very similar concealers. Even the size and shape of the applicators. This is the Kosas and this is the Catrice. The Catrice is a little bit more rounded and comes to a point, but these are both extremely flexible doe foot. So when I apply them, I feel like I'm getting the same result. 
Also, these formulas are incredibly similar where they're both somewhat thin in texture without being like a watery consistency. They're still on the thinner side, but they both provide a really high level of coverage based on that. Like I would say high, medium, buildable. And with both of these, I can do just like a little dot in the inner corner, blend out, and I feel like I've got a really good amount of coverage there. So I would say these are very, very similar. Now, which one do I like more? It's so hard to say. I would say they wear kind of the same. Almost entering, I don't want to call them dupes, but I would say they're they're so similar. I'm going to have to give it to the Catrice just based on how similar they are. But the difference being the Catrice is a fraction of the price. I think they're both great and I would recommend either. But also, depending on where you live, you might have much easier access to Catrice than Kosis. So I think based on the price, based on the availability, I would go with the Catrice. Okay, something that launched this year, two of my favorite brands redid their lipsticks. So Urban Decay and Bite Beauty both relaunched new versions of their lipsticks. And the claims for both of these are quite similar. They're supposed to be like comfortable matte formulas. Now, the Urban Decay lipsticks do come in multiple finishes, but I want to compare the matte version of that to the matte version of Bite because, you know, I'm not going to compare the cream version to the matte. Right here we have Bite, right here we have Urban Decay. And for these, I actually preferred the original formula from the Urban Decay Vice lipsticks. The Comfort Matte formula from the original that they've had for years, I thought was one of the best matte lipstick formulas out there. The new formulation, I find to be just a little bit more dry on my lips. I think that the Bite one wins this round for sure. This was in one of my favorites of the year. The shade I have is called Sugar Buns, and this formula is supposed to be a powdery finish, and I would say that's a very accurate description for it. It almost feels like powder on your lips, but not in a dry way more so in like a smooth, blurred, soft way. Like the finish of this is soft. Urban Decay wins with price point, but I would say based on formula, the Bite is a more comfortable matte formula. Circling back to powders, the one you guys kept asking me was this versus this. These were like two of my powder favorites from 2021 that I talked about in so many videos and you guys were like, how do they, how do they stack up? So. First, we have the Kosas Cloud Set Powder. Hello, I talk about it constantly. There's not a video that I don't talk about this. This is the LYS Triple Fix Translucent Setting Powder. I have mine in the shade Resilient. So when it comes to price point, this wins by far. This is only $18. You really cannot beat that on the high-end side of things. The textures of these are slightly different because this one, the Kosas one, feels a little bit more dry in the pan because the formula is more baked whereas this is more of a true pressed powder. But I would say on the skin, the finish is similar, but the Kosas one is a little bit more lightweight. Like that's just kind of what happens with baked products like this. They almost feel like nothing on the skin. And what's so unique about this powder that I feel like I cannot replicate with something else is that it sets products down, but the glow on my skin still shines through. This is a matte product when you see it. It's not adding glow the way something like an hourglass ambient lighting powder would, but it's not mattifying. It's just locking products in, blurring, it's kind of diffusing. Even today, I felt like my blush was looking like a little bit too much when I sat down and I was like, okay, I don't like this. So I took a big fluffy brush, just tapped it over this, and I feel like it softened it so well. Okay, it's hard for me to put these two head to head because they're both so great. And I think that you could love either one. The price point of this one is definitely better, but I would say the Kosas one is a little bit better. It's just a little bit more lightweight. I would say, okay, if you have dry skin, Kosas. If you have slightly more oily skin, LYS, okay? I think either skin type would like either, but that's going to be my distinction. Like this is like the closest one in the video but I still think the Kosas one just looks so much more natural than any other powder I have ever used. Okay, 
Let's talk cream bronzers. So this year I tried this one from Tarte. This is their breezy cream bronzer in the shade, in the shade Seychelles. So I have a little mini of this and a lot of you guys were asking me how it stands up to the Milk Makeup Bronzer Stick. So I first wanna share swatches. I have the bronzer stick in the shade Baked and again, I have the Tarte in the shade Seychelles. So the colors are quite similar between these two. I would say in terms of depth, they're almost the same, but the undertones are slightly different. And you can see that the Milk Makeup one looks a little bit more glowy on my hand, whereas the Tarte is slightly more matte. This is the other one that I'm like, this, is, this was a really hard decision that I was like, you know what, let me wait. When I'm on camera, I'll decide in the moment. I would say they're kind of similar. There's a little bit more of a red undertone in the Tarte one, so if that is your preference, you might like that, whereas the Milk one, the warmth is a little bit more brown-based. I also think the Milk Makeup one is slightly more pigmented and slightly more creamy. Also, they're both similar price point, but the value you get with the Milk, if you buy the full size, you will never run out of this. Okay, the weight. Someone mentioned in a video recently that they're not selling the full size of this anymore, so I just checked and it appears that that's true. On Sephora, I'm just seeing a 0.24 ounce version for $20 as opposed to this one, which is one ounce. Ooh, so then that kind of takes that out of the equation because the Tarte Mini is $14 and it's 0.21 ounces. So the price difference is not that significant between the two. Okay, that changes things. I think I'm still going to go with the Milk Makeup one. I think the bronzy tone of this is a little bit more natural on the skin. I think they both look incredibly natural, but this one's a little bit warmer. Honestly though, I feel like you can't go wrong with either. I would highly recommend both if you're into cream bronzers. Okay, these are two primers that I talk about all the time and you guys are always asking me which one do I recommend more. So this is the Ordinary High Adherent Silicone Primer. This retails for only $5. And this is the Hard Canvy Sheer Envy Hydrating Primer, the grip version, and this retails for only $7. They both come with one ounce of product. Now, these two are a slightly different texture. This is creamy and this is more of a gel base. The performance of these though is actually quite similar. They both do a tiny bit of smoothing and they also really grip onto foundation. However, I would say if you're more so looking for smoothing, I would go with this one. If you're more so looking for gripping, I would go with this one, though I think they both kind of do a little bit. I think this from Hard Candy is slightly better for dry skin. Lately, my skin has been extra dry, so I have been reaching for this, and I feel like it adds a little bit of hydration while also kind of smoothing things out, giving me that nice base to put foundation over top of. The Ordinary one does add a little bit of hydration, but I would not say it's as significant as the Hard Candy. Both of these make my makeup last longer, but I would say based on the hydration and the grip, I feel like I get a little bit more grip out of this one, so I'm going to actually give it to the Hard Candy Sheer Envy Hydrating Primer. This was a subscriber made me buy it product this year, and I'm so glad that I picked it up. It has been a major favorite from 2021. I also mentioned another video recently that I wanna try the e.l.f. gripping primer that they just launched, so we'll kinda of see how that stacks up. Honestly though, I feel like it could not beat this because the e.l.f. one is $10, this is $7, and I feel like it's going to be hard to beat this. Another one of my favorites I mentioned for 2021 was this blush from Bite. This is their Daycation blush. This is a creamy blush, similar to like a highlighter in terms of texture. And every time I mention this, I compare it to this. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Glowgasm Beauty Light Wand in the shade Pinkgasm. Pinkgasm and Melon Mojito are identical. Like the color is pretty much the same. Like there are the swatches. This one up top is the Bite. Underneath is the Charlotte Tilbury. The Bite maybe is slightly more of a red base, but the colors are so similar, especially on the cheeks, and they both have that sheen similar to a liquid highlight. Now, the performance is similar and the cost is pretty similar for both of these. They're both very expensive. Now, I would say that the Bite one has a better wear time. For me, the Charlotte Tilbury wand does fade somewhat quickly, but my other pro for this one is that the Charlotte Tilbury one is easier to blend out than the Bite one. That's normally the case. 
Liquid products that set down quickly last longer but are harder to blend out and then vice versa. So you kind of have to choose what's more important to you. Do you want the longevity or do you want the ease? Because of that, this is so hard, but I actually prefer the applicator on this. I like that you have this doe foot that you can just dot onto your cheeks. There is something slightly inconvenient about having to pump this out and then apply it. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but I think this would have been even better with an applicator within the pack built into the packaging what i normally do with this i pump it out on my hand and then i pick it up with my finger start to apply it and then tap it out with my sponge with this i apply it directly to my skin tap it out with my finger and then tap it out with my sponge so honestly i, I kind of do a similar thing with both like i said they're such similar products if i had to choose one though I'm just barely going to pick the Charlotte Tilbury one. The result, oops, I just threw that across the room, but the result is so similar with both, but I like the ease of this one just a little bit more, but they both give such a beautiful glow to the skin. Let me know down below if you've tried any of these products from today, and I will go ahead and see you guys tomorrow for the next day of Vlogmas. Bye, guys.